So CES 2023 is over and a bunch of 14 inch gaming laptops were announced. Some were just refreshes and there's even a new MSI 14 inch gaming laptop. And I kind of want to talk about the good and the bad of these laptops. My first impressions to give you an idea of which one I think is going to be the best one to buy. But look, this is not all of the 14 inch gaming laptops that are coming out this year. A couple of you dropped comments saying, where's the Razer Blade 14? Where's the Acer Triton 300 SE? Look, those are going to be announced later this year. So they're still coming, just not right now. But what I really want to see is a 14 inch gaming notebook from Lenovo, maybe a Lenovo Legion 4 Pro. I mean, come on, Lenovo, you're slacking over here. You're the only one missing from the party. But before I begin, there's still a lot of amazing laptop deals happening at Best Buy, who was kind of enough to partner on this part of the video. For example, a Dell XPS 15, 3.5K OLED display, 16 gigabytes of RAM, i7 12th gen processor, RTX 3050 Ti is $500 off. And if you're not too fond of the upcoming G16, because it's no longer AMD, the older G15 can be bought right now for $320 off. And that nets you an RTX 3060 Ryzen 9 6900HS and a QHD display. And if that's out of your budget, Dell Inspirant 3511, which is a 15 inch laptop, comes with an i5, eight gigabytes of RAM, a 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD, for only 429. I'll place links to all of these laptops in the description down below. Now the new kit on the block is the MSI Stealth 14 Studio. And I kind of dig the aesthetic of this. They were able to create this 14 inch gaming laptop that looks very competitive with the G14 up to a certain point. It's using a magnesium alloy chassis. It's about the same thinness. It's pretty much equal when it comes to weight. The only thing I don't like about it is the butt or the end of the laptop. I don't know why they'd have to put the Stealth logo in RGB there. It looks like a tramp stamp. I also think it looks a bit tacky. Now granted, this is super subjective, and you can always just turn off the RGB, but it just didn't need to be there in the first place. You get tons of IO, so a one Thunderbolt 4 port, you get another Type-C USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, which supports DisplayPort and power delivery in, I'm assuming up to 100 watts. You have a Type-A port, you have an HDMI 2.1 port, and of course an audio combo jack. Now, I like the fact that it doesn't come with the heaviest power brick, considering that this could be spec 4070. So you're looking at a 240 watt charger, but if you don't want to carry that with you, you can still be able to charge. And of course you can utilize that power delivery port. It, look, this is not perfect. You know, like when you open this thing up and, and you look at that webcam, you're going to realize it's 720p and most of the other companies have moved over to 1080p. So for some people that might be a bit of a turnoff, but the keyboard layout looks to be super solid. It is using RGB per key RGB, so you can customize it to any color you want. And the touchpad does look like to be a very good size. Now choosing a display option is going to be super simple because there's only one option to choose from. It's QHD plus, And just like the rest of the 14 inch notebooks, they're moving to 16 by 10 and it's a 240 Hertz display. Now I'm assuming that this is going to be color accurate because it's supposed to be hundred percent DCI P3 color gamut. The only thing I don't like is the fact that there's no mini led option. This holds true for the, Alienware X14, but if you want mini LED on a 14 inch display, it seems like the Asus G14 is the only one doing it right now. The processor, just like the display, is only one option. It's an i7-13700H. So right off the bat, it's already more powerful than the Alienware X14. And you can pair this with up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. The GPU options are a 4050, 4060, or 4070. I don't know the TGP, but I'm assuming it's 85 or 100 watts. Probably a bit lower if you choose the RTX 4050 model, but you can put up to a two terabyte NVMe SSD inside of here. Now, I don't think this is gonna be faster than the Asus G14. I think that the performance on this guy is gonna sit between the Alienware X14 and the Asus G14. It might be the fastest in terms of CPU speeds, but because you can spec the G14 with an RTX 4090, this will place it directly in the middle. Now, I don't know how the thermals are gonna be because I haven't tested it out yet, but it will have a vapor chamber cooler, just like the Alienware X14 if you get certain GPU options, and just like the G14. The battery is gonna be the smallest out of the bunch though. This is only gonna have a 72 watt hour battery compared to the 76 that's in the G14 and the 80 watt hour in the Alienware X14. Now here's the thing about the Alienware X14. I still think this is one of the most beautiful 14 inch gaming laptops you can buy right now, but it constrains itself with the design because for a 14 inch laptop, it's too heavy. Like it's 4.5 pounds and that's comparable to a thin and light 
16 inch notebooks that are coming out right now. On top of it, it's constrained in terms of performance. Like the GPU only tops out at 85 watts of TGP plus dynamic boost, which is lower in comparison to the competition. On top of that, this is gonna be expensive. You're paying a lot more for sure, a better looking device, but for a device that's probably not gonna perform as well as the Stealth 14 or obviously the G14. Now the G14 is the elephant in the room because this one has always been like the top pick over the past few years and I have a feeling in 2023, it's still gonna hold that crown. Like they're not changing the design. Like it's pretty much identical to the previous 2022 model, but what they are doing is going back to Nvidia. And I think that's a smart move. Like last year's version was good, but it's gonna be better with an Nvidia GPU because you're gonna get that efficiency that AMD offers with their CPUs paired with an Nvidia GPU that can go up to an RTX 4090. Now, obviously this is not gonna be the most powerful RTX 4090 in a laptop. It tops out at 100 watts plus 25 watts of dynamic boost, but still, like that's more powerful than the 4070 that's inside of the Stealth 14 and way more powerful than the 3060 that you can buy with the Alienware X14, sorry, 4060. The only other laptop that has the potential to beat this that we know about is the Razer Blade 14. And we know that's going to be much more expensive than any of these products. But as much as I love the G14, it's not perfect either. Now this year's version, you can get that mini LED display, but for some reason it only tops out at 600 nits of brightness compared to the mini LED displays that are coming out on the 16 inch notebooks. Those go up to 1100 nits of peak brightness. Also the G14 only has 4,800 megahertz RAM, which is a little bit slower than what MSI is offering. But personally, I don't think it's gonna make that much difference in terms of everyday performance. The one thing that ASUS needs to solve for this model is quality control and heat management. I did find the previous version from last year to get a bit too hot. Now look, this is what I do if I was you right now. And I haven't reviewed any of these laptops, but this is just based on my first impressions. I think G14 is gonna to continue to be the best bang for your buck in terms of performance. I think the MSI has a lot of potential if you're looking for a 4060. The price point is good, and based on the stuff I'm seeing, this could be a very good alternative to the 4060 version of the ASUS G14. Unfortunately, as much as I love the Alienware X14, I just don't think it's gonna be worth it. It's underperforming, the RAM is soldered on, it's heavier than the other two, and the price is probably gonna be more expensive. Anyways, I'm gonna be reviewing all of these laptops once they come in, so make sure you subscribe to the channel to see that. And links to all these amazing Best Buy deals will be in the description down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.